Jesus desires that we crave for him in the same way that we would for physical food. Throughout the Gospels, we see Jesus identifying himself with many titles. He called himself the true vine, the good shepherd. He even referred to himself as the way, the truth and the life. In the Gospel today, Jesus reveals himself as the bread of life. To understand this, we go back to the Old Testament, to the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt, where we read of their struggle in the desert, the great hunger that they had to endure. However, later we come to see that God in his mercy and compassion, using the great miracle of the manna, satisfied the hunger of the Israelites. The manna from above had two significances. One, it truly satisfied the people, meaning to say that they were in a real sense nourished by it. And the second is the fact that it was God who nourished the people. The manna, however, was merely a prefiguration of the greater food to come, that is, the Eucharist. Now we come back to the Gospels, to the most interesting statement in Jesus' address to the crowd, where he says, I am the bread of life. Why bread? And more importantly, why bread of life? Jesus has a habit of using tangible everyday realities to explain heavenly mysteries. So to understand Jesus better, we need to dig deeper into the mystery of bread. Bread as we know is taken from the wheat of the earth in the same way that Jesus took his flesh from all mankind. Bread as we know is mingled, it is kneaded with water in the same way that Jesus shared in the struggles of mankind. Bread as we know passes through the flames of the oven in the same way that Jesus suffered for the sake of the whole of humanity. Bread as we know is broken before it is shared and consumed, in the same way that Jesus broke himself on the cross and shared himself with the whole world. And this sharing was not and is not merely an abstract one, rather it is a real and tangible one. When the garden scene in Eden is analyzed further, we realize that the action by which man fell was that of eating. God in his wisdom deigned that the action by which man died be the same by which he be raised back to life. Now, let us recall the time we had a meal with our family and our friends. The meal would be a sign of familiarity. The table would become a place where we relate with people and get to know them. It is a place where we get acquainted with people. And the meal becomes a meal of communion, a fellowship meal. In the same way, Jesus wishes to establish his relationship with us through a meal at table. And this table is the altar, where Jesus is both the host and the meal. Through this sacred meal, we who are once far away from God are brought back into communion with him. We are brought back to life. Another reason why Jesus calls himself the bread of life is because he wishes that the desire we have for him be likened to an appetite. Jesus desires that we crave for him in the same way that we would for physical food. All of us have this appetite for God within us. But not all of us satiate this appetite using the right means. Wealth, fame, talents, not even our near and dear ones can satisfy us the way Jesus does. All of these things are necessary to lead a meaningful life. However, they cannot satisfy our hunger for God. They cannot give us fulfillment and wholeness. And moreover, they cannot give us life and love the way Jesus does. My dear brothers and sisters, let us strive to develop a great love for Jesus who feeds us in the Eucharist. Let us make a commitment to receive him with the greatest possible reverence. And let us all strive to spend more time with Jesus, the bread of life. Amen. <music>